Hey class, it's Billberry with a quick video on the self-join. In class, several of you wanted more information about this and felt like you still weren't wrapping your brain around it. Well, it's kind of understandable given what we've looked at, but there are some great examples in the world and I want to bring you one of those so it's more clear. The types of joins we've looked at that are maybe more clear are inner joins. If you do an inner join, you know you're matching data across two tables and you only get the data that matches where the keys literally line up. So that makes some sense and we know that an outer join lets us step beyond that and say, look, we want all the data from this table plus the matching data from that table. If there isn't matching data, we're still seeing the ones from the first table. And you can use a left and r or right outer join in order to pull that stuff together, which is fine. Now, the self-join, a little bit harder to understand, but really not hard to implement. We know we put the same table twice and we use aliases so we can distinguish them and we tr sort of treat it as two tables. So, but what's a real world example? Well, it turns out we've really got a great example here. In fact, this is the quintessential example, uh, the best one for you to lock into your brain as a great example of a self-join. In the EX database, if you have the current uh, schemas, which you can get from our course website if you need them, go and get that if you need it, but you'll have this employees table. And so you'll notice that employees has employee ID, last name, first name, department, and then here's the magic, a manager ID. The magic is that the manager ID is in fact the, I the employee ID of the person's manager. So if you think about it a second, this is a perfect place for us to use a self-join because this needs to be looked up into here, right? We have to look up the manager ID as an employee ID in order to answer the question. So look at employee 5, for instance. Robert Aronson works for manager ID 4. Well, who is ID 4? Well, we look up the 4 in the, as a manager ID over here as an employee ID and find that that's Olivia Hernandez. So Robert Aronson is managed by Olivia Hernandez. How are we going to list those two together as employee and manager? A self-join is the only way to do that, right? We've got to look in this table for that data. Uh, so that's a that's a great question for us to answer and a perfect example. Now we can also, if we think about it, tweak the uh, queries that we come up with to say, do we have employees who have no managers? Interesting question. Or can we get a list of employees who are not managers, who are just individual contributors? We can answer all of these questions once we know how to put this together as a self-join. So cool. Let's go take a quick peek at that. So the first thing I do is say use EX. I run that query so that that becomes the default database. And then I can, of course, run my query and see all the data if I want. All right, so here's all of our my folks. All right, so let's leave a little bit of that showing just so I can see it while I'm starting to type. All right, so let's come back to the, so the, the select list in a minute. But let's start right now and talk about, uh, I guess I can put this over here, from. Okay, so obviously I'm going to be pulling from the employees table in both cases, employees. And I'm going to say, one, two, three, four, join employees. Right, but I know since I'm doing two tables, I'm going to have to give an alias. Now, I could just do this, right? E1 and E2, but that really doesn't cast light on our particular problem. If you think about it, I'm treating one table as the list of employees and then the same table separately as if that's the list of managers, right? So here's the magic, I think, that makes it clear. I'm going to call this EMPS and I'm going to call this managers, right? So now, Maybe it's more clear because I'm actually joining a table of employees with a table of managers. Turns out under the covers they're the same table, but we don't care. This works. So now this is great. Now how do I join them? One, two, three, four. On. Right? So now what do I do? I can't just say this where employee, uh, right, employee ID. I'm, I don't need to, I'm not matching employee ID to employee ID, right? In fact, if you think about it, what I'm doing is I'm matching manager ID to employee ID. And in fact, I'm saying, hey, in the table I'm treating as employees, I'm taking the manager ID and I'm going to match it up with the employee ID in the table that I'm treating as managers. Stop and think and re rewind that a little bit. Treating one one table the one uh, table I'm treating as an employees second table I'm treating as if it's managers I'm looking up the manager ID from the table I'm treating as employees as an employee ID in the table I'm treating as managers 
So get that through your head. Once you do, then you're going to be in business, and I think it's going to make sense to you. So now let's run this query and see what we get. Of course, with the join, I get all the columns from both tables. So here's, here is the first table stuff, and here is the second table stuff, and they should be matched. So for instance, I look at my Robert Aronson row, and in fact I see, of course, he's joined with Olivia Hernandez because I've taken the manager ID and matched it up with an employee ID, and so I get Olivia out. Great. So now I see everybody, uh, everybody there in the list, so that's perfect. So I have now answered the question, but maybe not in a graceful output. So what if I take, uh, I'm going to take the employee's uh, last name, uh, is that the right spelling? It's last underscore name. And I'm going to then concatenate it. Concat, employee's last name, and uh, maybe I'll put in a literal comma space, and then the employee's first underscore name. And then I'm going to call that employee. And then I'm going to also have one, two, three, four. In fact, I'm going to bring that in. Concat. Now I'm going to take manager's last name. Similarly, manager's first name as manager, right? So I'm pulling out the data, right? Again, one set from the one I'm treating as the employee and one from the table I'm treating as managers. And I'm going to bring those two things together and see what I get. Now I'm going to run that query again and let's see if we got the right thing. In fact, I do, right? Here's Robert Aronson, here's Olivia Hernandez, and you can go through and see everybody and their manager. Does that make sense to you? I hope it kind of does, and I think being able to call these different tables uh, different names with the aliases actually helps us in this case. It actually helps us mentally separate the fact that we're treating the table as kind of two separate entities. So I hope that that's, uh, that's useful to you. Now, let's take this and let's see if we can make a... Uh, in fact, let's let's let me label this for you. This is a list of employees and their managers. All right. So now let's go here and copy this, and then let's make a, a little tweak to it and see if we can do something fun. So, for instance, instead of doing an inner join, right, the implied inner join that we were doing before, what if we did a left outer join? What are we saying here, right? Now, before, oops, oh, what happened there? Um, before we run it, I want you to think about what this might mean. Because we're saying we want to see all the what? All the thing from the table on the left, which happens to be, if we do this, right, it makes sense because this is the one that's on the left, right, to the left of it. So I want to see all the employees and if they happen to have a manager, great. So what is this going to get? Not a list of employees, but a list of people and their manager even if the person has no manager. So you notice down here Cindy Smith says null. Why? Well, Cindy Smith is the big boss, so she has no manager. Right? Now, could you, uh, could you say the list of um, employees with no managers? Well, sure. How can we fix up the query to do that? All we have to do now is say where and then it's going to be, um, let's say, manager ID, where, let's say, employees, uh, what's the best way to do that? How about we just do this, where managers.managerID, uh, manager ID equals is null. All right, let's see if that gets us what we want. I think it will. Uh, that didn't quite get it. We've got to do a little more thinking here. Ah, here it is. You have to look in the employees table, not the managers table, right? It's we're looking as the as the em the employee has no manager, not the manager has no manager. There we go. So this is a list of employee with no managers. We just have to add, hey, in the t table we're treating as employees, they have no manager ID, right? So that's a pretty straightforward way to use a left outer join. Well, how about the right outer join? What can that accomplish for us? Because that a does something real too. So this is the right outer join, and again, what's this saying? Well, this is going to say, I want to see all the, all the people who are potential managers and the people that are 
that work for them, right? So what's going to happen now, let's take out the WHERE clause again and let's just run this query and what are we going to get? Well, this is going to show a bunch of people who have employee null, right? In other words, they're not managers. List of employees who are not managers. Right? And then to find those, we just treat them, we just do similar to what we did the other time, but now we're going to say where, and then we just put in the rest of the phrase. So in this case, we can say, hey, in the employee table, the employee ID is null. Right? So the, the matching employee ID for that manager is null. So this can get us a list of those who are not managers. So up here, we found a list of people who have no manager, and down here with the right outer join, people who are not managers, who are only individual contributors. Individual contributors. So you can see here that the self-join is useful for three different reasons, gives us three different interesting sets of results. One, the main one I want you to think about, <coughs> list of employees and their managers, and it's done this way, and then playing with the left and right outer joins and adding one more query looking for nulls. It's easy enough to find out other people who are who either have no manager or who themselves are not managers. So hopefully this makes a lot more sense to you once we've done this. Again, we're taking one table and treating it as two different things, and in this case we're treating one as an employee and one as a manager. We're using this to help look up one column at using one column as a lookup into another column and the self-join is a great example of that. So I hope that that kind of cements that knowledge for you and helps you really understand uh, where this thing's going and why a self-join can really in fact be useful. Think about it in other contexts. You could have a genealogy where you had a list of people and then you could have their parents. Right, So a parent ID could be listed in another column. column. So to find a list of people and their parents, you would have to do a self-join because both pieces of data are in the same table, but you need to link them together based on another field, another column. So that's the kind of thing where a self-join really shines. That's a better example than the one in the book. Thanks for watching this video, and let me know if you have further questions or follow-up uh, comments on the video. Thanks.